Very good morning, friend. This is the fourth session of MMPF 001 Working Capital Management. I am Asim Kumar, and till date we have covered Block One, Block Two, and part of Block Three. In Block One, we have completed concept and determination, and then. the conceptual framework operating environment of working capital determination of working capital then in block 2 on the topic management of current assets management of receivables management of cash management of marketable securities and on management of inventory in block 3 in the last session we have completed unit number 8 that was theories and approaches on the topic financing of working capital friends today we are just going to cover two units of block 3 on the title financing of working capital we'll be covering the payables management and bank credit principles and practices this is unit number 9 about the payables management let us just understand what is payables payable means once you are having a credit transaction with your supplier or with your vendor you will be having the amount either to payable or payable from so let us just have the introduction first the substantial a uh, substantial part of purchase of goods and services in business are on credit terms rather than against cash payment while the supplier of goods and services tend to perceive credit as a lever for enhancing sales or as a form of non price instrument of competition the buyer tends to look upon it as a loaning of goods or inventory the supplier credit is referred to as accounts payable means once the supplier has given you the credit for the goods or services purchased by you it would be accounts payable or trade credit or trade bill or trade acceptance or commercial draft or bills payable it depends what kind of credit it has been provided to you the extent to which the buy now pay later facility is provided will depend upon a variety of factors such as the nature and quality and volume of items to be purchased the prevalent practices in the trade the degree of competition and the financial status of the parties concerned friends trade credits or payable constitutes a major segment of current liabilities in many businesses enterprises and they primarily finance inventories which form a major component of current assets in many cases so in nutshell if you just look at of course there are certain services there are certain other items where you just get these payables but is a major component of the current assets in many cases where the accounts payable or bills payables are being given by the supplier Let us just understand the significance of payables. 
paid credits or payables serve as non interest bearing source of fund in most cases see when you just supply the goods as a supplier you are in general are not talking about the interest on the supply bid it is in the exceptional circumstances which we are just going to discuss a little later in such time it is a non interest bearing source of funds what they do they provide a spontaneous source of capital that flows in naturally in the course of business in keeping with established commercial practices or formal understanding it is a continuous it is a spontaneous source of capital that flows in naturally in the course of business in keeping with established commercial practices so normal course of action it is without an interest to be charged what are the types of trade credits let us just look at it trade credits or payable could be of three types open accounts promissory notes and bills payable if we just speak about the open account or open credit it operates as an informal arrangement where the supplier after satisfying himself or herself about the credit worthiness of the buyer dispatches the goods as required by the buyer and sends the invoice with the particulars of quantity dispatched the rate and total price payable and the payment terms the buyer records his liability to the supplier in his books of account and this is shown as payable on open account the buyer is then expected to meet his obligation on the due date normal course of action normal account where when you are purchasing on credit you are showing them as credit and on the due date whatever is given on the bill you make the payment to the supplier but there is a formal document also is needed by the supplier in some cases so is the next case the promissory note is a formal document signed by the buyer promising to pay the amount to the seller at a fixed or determinable future time where the client fails to meet his obligation as per open credit on the due date the supplier may require a formal acknowledgement of debt and a commitment of payment by a fixed date the promissory note is thus an instrument of acknowledgement of debt and a promise to pay the supplier may even stipulate an interest payment for the delay involved in payment now friends when you are not dealing properly when you are accounts payable are not being settled properly you need to get this kind of setbacks now the supplier would be needing a written acknowledgement of the debt and the time also by which you are going to pay so that's the document a formal document which is signed by the buyer promising to pay the amount to the seller at a fixed or determinable future time it could be mutual it could be by the buyer side it could be from the seller side also that i need payment by such and such time and you have to give that promissory note next is bills receivable or commercial drafts in case there is anything which is just coming up as a matter of abundant precaution the seller also they are signing one document is called bills receivable or commercial drafts this instrument is drawn by the seller and accepted by the buyer as the buyer was writing a promissory note 
but in this case the seller is writing a bill on the buyer and buyer is signing that document their buyer is accepting the payment on the expiry of specified duration the bill of draft will indicate the banker to whom the amount to be paid on the due date the goods will be delivered to the buyer against acceptance of the bill it may so happen that these kind of formalities could be for the new vendors but as long as the old customers are concerned unless they make any blunder mistake in payment or accounts payable open account these kind of formalities are not there or maybe as a policy there are some companies who are just talking about this kind of document as a practice not common to all the seller may either retain the bill or present it for payment on the due date or may raise funds immediately thereon by discounting it with the banker it may so happen once you are just signing the document that you will pay on such and such date the bank also recognize that document as a legal one and they discount the bill suppose it is of 100 rupees they give you 90 rupees immediately and they collect 100 rupees from the buyer the buyer will then pay the amount to the banker on the due date because the bank has taken this responsibility to collect the bill from you and then you are supposed to pay whomsoever the person is whether it is supplier or their nominated person would be receiving the money on the due date okay so the supplier gets money in the interregnum period because they discount the bill from their banker determination of trade credit how do you just determine the trade credit how when what are the parameters where you determine the trade credit size of the firm when you speak about size of the firm smaller firms have increasing dependence on trade credit as they find it difficult to obtain alternative source of finance as easily as medium or large size firms they need this kind of trade credit okay the large and medium size firms they don't need this kind of facility they can make cash payment also or they can avail the discount also by making the payment before the due date at the same time larger firms that are less vulnerable to adverse turns in business can command prompt credit facility from the supplier those who are less vulnerable to adverse turns in business can command why because they are not that bad in their terms their ranking is better so they can get a prompt credit facility from the supplier while smaller firms may find it difficult to sustain credit worthiness during the period of financial strain and may have reduced access to credit due to weak financial position financial position may be in the beginning may be in the interregnum period may be at some time but when your financial position is weak definitely the access to the credit is also coming out to be difficult industrial categories different categories of industry or commercial enterprise show varying degree of dependence on trade credit how in certain line of business the prevailing commercial practices may stipulate purchase against payment in most cases wherever there is a monopoly firm may insist upon cash on delivery because they don't have any competitor so they can dictate their terms there could be instances where the firm's inventory turns over every fortnight but the firm enjoys 30 days credit from suppliers whereby the trade credit not only finances the firm's inventory but also provides part of the operating funds or additional working capital 
see your raw material semi finished goods finished goods are those supplies are getting exhausted within 15 days but you enjoy the 30 days credit from the suppliers that means there are two supplies which you always keep or you enjoy to keep them as pending nature of product product that can sell faster or which have higher turnover may need shorter term credit see there are certain things like perishable items milk butter bread you have to sell them out within a day or two so it has got higher turnover may need shorter term credit whereas products with slower turnover like refrigerator television air conditioner maybe it is fast in summer season but what about the other seasons when there is comparatively cold so products with the slower turnover in those periods take longer to generate cash flows and we need extended credit terms it may so happen that you will be just needing some more credit terms some more extended period because your product is not that saleable immediately financial position of seller if financial position of seller is like medium size or large size firms they can afford to give credit but if not they small time people small time supplier definitely they need cash or they need shorter term credit to give the financial position of seller will influence the quantity and period of credit he wishes to extend financially weak suppliers will have to strict and operate on higher credit terms to buyers okay financially stronger supplier on the other hand can dictate stringent credit terms but may prefer to extend liberal credit so long as transaction provide benefit in excess of the cost of the extending credit now there is a catch the cost of extending credit if it is more than the money received definitely you are at a loss so better till such time you are getting the benefit in excess of the cost of extending credit you will keep on giving them credit to the vendors they can afford to extend the credit to smaller firms and assume higher risks supplier with working capital crunch will be willing to offer higher cash discounts to encourage early payments those who have the capital crunch those who have the cash crunch those who have the liquidity crunch will definitely be just offering the vendor a higher cash discount so that at least they can be get the payment early financial position of the buyer buyer's credit worthiness is an important factor in determining the credit quantum and period it may be logical to expect large buyers not to insist on extended credit terms from smaller supplier with weak bargaining power where goods are supplied on consignment terms the supplier provide extra finance to the merchandise and pays commission to the consignee for the goods sold it's all together different domain small retailer retailers are thus enabled to carry much larger levels of stock then they will be able to finance by themselves slow paying or delinquent accounts may be compelled to accept stricter stricter now this is why because you are a delinquent credit terms or higher price for the product to cover risk if you are not very good in payment definitely you will be compelled to make a higher price payment for the products or your credit terms would be strict one terms of sale the magnitude of trade credit is influenced by the terms of sale when the product is sold the seller sends the buyer and invoice that specifies the goods or services the price and the total amount due and the terms of the sale 
these terms fall into several broad categories according to the net period within which payment is expected what could be the situation then when the terms of sale are only on cash basis there could be only two situations one is cash on delivery the other one is cash for delivery cash before delivery under these two situations the seller does not extend any credit because the terms are cash but if you give the credit there is a possibility of giving cash discount by the supplier to encourage you to give the payment on early period so cash discount influences the effective length of credit failure to take the advantage of cash discount could result in the buyer using the funds at an effective date rate of interest higher than that of alternative sources of finances available if you are not availing that cash discount that means you are using the effective rate of interest which is higher than the alternative source of finance available by providing cash discount and inducing goods good credit risk to pay within the discount period the supplier will also save the cost of the administration connected with keeping records of dues and collecting overdue amounts once you receive cash definitely there are less records you are supposed to prepare and there are less persuasion you are supposed to make the degree of risk estimate of credit risk associated with the buyer will indicate that credit policy is to be adopted what credit policy is to be adopted the risk may be with the reference to the buyer's financial standing or with the reference to the nature of the business the buyer is in nature and extent of competition monopoly status facilitates imposition of tight credit terms whereas intense competition will promote the tendency to liberalize credit newly established companies in competitive fields may more readily resort to liberal trade credit for prompting sales than established firms which are more formal in deciding on credit points so if you are new in the competition definitely you would be little liberal to provide the trade credit to the vendors dating is in seasonal industries sellers frequently use dating to encourage customers to place their orders before a heavy selling period for many customer durables the demand will be of this type like in the off season for air conditioner and refrigerator you are encouraging them to give their order so that at least you are giving them the different schemes and increasing your sale of these consumer durables because the need for any air conditioner is felt in the summer leading to heavy ordering at a particular point of time however this has double advantage for manufacturer he can schedule production more conveniently and reduce the inventory levels because once you get the orders in the off season also you need to keep less inventory in the seasonal thing yes there will be certain orders you will be just getting it but comparatively it will be more convenient whereas the buyer has the advantage of not having to pay the goods until the peak of the selling period under this agreement credit is extended for a longer period than normal because you are buying the things in the off season definitely the credit would be the extended period as well so the payment would also be at ease whereas in the peak season your orders will be higher the payment would also be stricter 
because the funds generation and funds collection is of paramount nature. Cost of credit. Trade credit is a built-in source for financing that is normally linked to the production cycle of the purchasing firm. If payments are made strictly in accordance with the credit terms, trade credit can be regarded as cost free. If you make the payment in time, it is cost free. Non-discretionary source of financing is the second priority, but where the buyer takes the privilege of delaying the payment beyond the due date, it assumes the form of discretionary financing and if this becomes a regular feature, it is resulting in the delinquency. Trade credit will cease to be cost free. The supplier may stop the credit or may charge a higher price for the product to cover the risk. The rationale for trade credit should be its saving in cost over the forms of short term financing, its flexibility and convenience. Stretching trade credit or accounts payable result in two types of cost to the buyer. One is the cost of cash discount foregone and the other one is consequences of a poor credit rating. Okay. The contention that there is, there is no explicit cost to trade credit. If the payment is made during the discount period or if the payment is made on the due date, when no cash discount is offered is not totally tenable. The supplier who is denied the use of funds during the credit period may bear the cost fully and pass on part of it to the buyer through higher prices. This will depend on the nature and demand for the product. If the demand is elastic, the supplier may have to bear the cost himself and refrain from charging higher prices to recover part of it. The buyer should satisfy himself that the burden of trade credit it is not unduly loaded on him through disguised price revisions. Stretching accounts payable, delaying the payment. It is normally assumed that the payment to the supplier is made at the end of due date. However, a firm may postpone payment beyond the period as well. This type of postponement is called stretching or leaning on the trade. You are stretching it. You have been given one month, one month credit, but after one month credit also, you are just stretching it for another two weeks. So what happens? The cost of stretching accounts payable in twofold the cost of cash discount foregone. You won't get the cash discount because you didn't pay in time. And the possible deterioration of the credit rating occurs on you. If a firm stretches it payables ex excessively so that its payable are significantly delinquent, its credit rating will suffer altogether. Supplier will view the firm with apprehension that may insist rather strict terms of say. Although it is difficult to measure, there is certainly an opportunity cost to a deterioration in the firm's quality of payment. Advantage of payables, easy to obtain, payable or trade credit is readily obtainable. In most cases, without extended procedural formalities during the periods of credit, crunch and paucity of working capital, trade credit from large suppliers can be a boon to the small buyers. Supplier assume the risk because they are the large suppliers, they are the larger firms. So the supplier have the advantage of high gross margins on their product. They would be able to assume the greater risk and extend more liberal credit. Informality. In trade credit, there is no rigidity in the matter of repayment on scheduled dates. Occasional delays are not frowned upon. 
it serves an ex extendable convenient source of unsecured credit if it is reasonably delayed nobody is just bothering about it. but if it is unreasonably delayed definitely the cash account cash discount would be foregone and your credit rating would also be diminishing reducing and finally you may be facing the strict terms for the next go say order continuous financing even as the current dues are paid fresh credit flows in it is the sort of continuous cycle as for the purchases are made it is a continuous source of finance coming out like i said then when you are just selling the goods within a week but then your credit cycle is of a fortnight definitely every week you will be just getting the goods but you will be making the payment on fortnight every time you are just having the credit of one week with you even as the current dues are paid fresh credit flows in and further purchases are made it is a continuous source of finance with a steady credit term and the expectation of continuous calculation of trade credit backing up repeat purchases trade credit does is it in effect operate as a long term source effective management of payables what do we do if suppose our payables management should be effective what are the salient feature of effective management of payables are negotiate and obtain most favorable credit terms consistent with the prevailing commercial practice pertaining to the concerned product line it is the industrial practice where the cash discount is offered for prompt payment take advantage of the offer and derive the saving therefrom if they are offering the cash discount on early payment take that advantage because you will be just reducing your cost by doing so where cash discount is not provided settle the payables on the date of maturity not earlier it pays to avail the full credit term do not stretch payable beyond the due date now the precaution except in inescapable situation if you cannot just escape it yes it is a binding on you as such delay in meeting obligation have adverse effect on buyer's credibility and may result in more stringent credit terms denial of credit or higher prices on goods and services procured so do not just stretch it make the payment on the due date so that at least you don't get all these setbacks sustain healthy financial status and good track record of past dealing with the supplier so that it would maintain his confidence the quantum and terms of credit are mainly influenced by suppliers assessment of buyer's health and ability to meet the maturing obligation promptly you keep a healthy status financial status and your dealing should be so pure so so that at least you get the confidence of the supplier in high competitive situation supplier may be willing to stretch credit limits and periods assess your bargaining strength and get the best possible deal if you really get the credit once again even despite making the payment on time do a will that because it will be just a sort of instant source of funding in the working capital flow avoid the tendency to divert payables you get the payable for raw material you are diverting it for fixed asset no or you arrange the fund for fixed asset you are diverting it to raw material so maintain the self liquidating character of payables and do not use the funds obtained therefrom for acquiring fixed asset because the funds acquiring for fixed asset would be staying long with the organization therefore putting them in the other payables would be costly 
payable are meant to flow through current assets and speedily get converted into cash through sales for meeting maturity short term obligation yes you can just go for the short term obligations for the current assets provide full information to the supplier and concerned credit agency to facilitate a frank and fair assessment of financial status and associated problems with fuller appreciation of client's initiative to honor his obligation and the occasional financial strains which he might be subjected to for a variety of reasons the supplier will be more considerate and flexible in the matter of credit extension there should be a proper coordination between the purchase department and accounts department it is very much necessary why because then only you will be able to just to have a sort of monitoring on the accounts table regularly finally it is the command of the company on the data flow about the suppliers shortages market trends that would greatly contribute in designing newer and innovative ways in the management of payables okay so database should also be proper the monitoring should also be proper with that friends we have completed our unit number 9 now we are shifting to unit number 10 bank credit principles and practices the introduction says bank credit constitutes one of the major source of working capital for trade and industry with the growth of banking institution and the phenomenal rise in the deposit resources their importance as the supplier of working capital has significantly increased how of the total gross bank credit outstanding as at the end of february 2022 One lakh sixteen thousand twenty. One lakh sixteen. One lakh six. One crore sixteen lakh twenty seven thousand eight crore. An amount of rupees thirty one lakh thirty five thousand two hundred and seventy one crore is advanced to industry. Okay. which included all types of micro small medium and large industries this works out to be 27% this works out to be 27% why because 1 crore 16 lakh and 27% of it is 31 lakh 35000 crores if we include the service sector also then the wholesale and retail trade this percentage goes up very significantly to 52.5% individually the service industry alone accounted for little more than but compared to the product it is lesser by about 1.5 it is about 25.5% of the gross bank credit outstanding the amount is 2966593 so for the product cases we are having the credit of 3135000 and for the service sector we are having the credit of 2966000 as on february 2022 is this is constituting 52.5% where the service sector is 25.5% and the product for 27% before we go for bank lending principles we have to just look at what are those see cardinal principles which we have to just look at to give bank lending to the vendors
So while granting loans and advances, commercial banks follow the three cardinal principles of lending. These are the principles of safety, liquidity and profitability, which have been explained below. Principle of safety. The most important principle of lending is to ensure the safety of the funds lent. It means the borrower repay the amount of the loan with interest as per loan contract. The ability to repay the loan depends upon the borrower's capacity to pay as well as his willingness to pay. They may be having the capacity but not the willingness. To ensure the former, the bank deposit depends upon the tangible assets and viability of his business to earn profits. Borrower's willingness depends upon his honesty and character. Banker therefore takes into account both the mentioned aspect to determine the credit worthiness of the buyer and ensure safety to the funds lent because it is their main business. They extend the credit to the vendors, but they need the safety quotient also. So they take it as a principle. Principle of liquidity, bank mobilize funds through deposit which are repayable on demand or over short to medium periods. The banker therefore lend their funds for short period and for working capital purposes. These loans are largely repayable on demand and are granted on the basis of securities which are easily marketable so that they may realize their dues by selling the securities if the time comes like that. Third cardinal principle is principle of profitability. Banks are profit earning institutions. They lend their funds to earn income out of the pay interest to the depositor. They incur their operational expenses, earn profit for distribution to owners. They charge different rates of interest according to the risk involved in lending funds to various buyers. However, they do not have to sacrifice safety or liquidity for the sake of higher profitability. So liquidity and safety should not be foregone, should not be left while earning the profits. Following the above principle, banks pursue the practice of diversifying risk by spreading advances over a seas reasonably wide area distributed among us a good number of customers belonging to different trades and industries. Loans are granted for speculative and unproductive purposes. This is the important basis which is not encouraging to have any funds from the bank. What is the style of credit? Commercial banks provide finance for working capital purposes through a variety of method. They may be having some terms and condition, the rights and privileges of the buyer and bank. It would be different in each case. Let us just have the discuss of these methods of granting bank credit. Overdrafts is allowed to current account holders for a short period. Under this facility, the current account holder is permitted by the banker to draw from his account more than what stands to their credit. What happens to this excess credit? The excess amount drawn by him is deemed as advance taken from the bank. What they do? They pay the interest on the exact amount or overdrawn by the account holder for the period of actual utilization, whatever period we have used. The banker may grant such an advance either on the basis of collateral security or on the personal security of the buyer. Overdraft facility is granted by a bank on an application made by the borrower. borrower. It is not automatic. He is also required to sign a promissory note. Therefore, the customer is allowed the amount up to the essential limit of overdraft as and when he needs it. 
he is permitted to repay the loan as per his convenience and ability to do so so it is the extended credit but of course interest bearing on the period of say amount being used by the borrower next credit system is cash credit system cash credit system account for the major portion of the bank credit in india what are the salient feature under this system the banker prescribes a limit called the cash credit limit up to the customer borrower is permitted to borrow against the security of tangible assets or guarantees so the borrower gives some tangible assets and some guarantees they give and the banker they extend that cash credit limit to the customer the bank fixes the cash credit limit after considering various aspect of the working of the borrowing concern it could be the production sale inventory levels past utilization of such limit the borrower is permitted to withdraw from his cash credit account the amount as and when he needs them surplus funds with him are allowed to be deposited with the banker any time the cash credit account is thus a running account it is movement wherein the withdrawal and deposit may be made frequently any number of times as the borrower withdraws from cash credit account he is required to provide security of tangible assets a charge is created on the movable asset of the borrower in favor of the bank when the borrower repays the borrowed amount in full security is released to him in the same proportion in which the amount is refunded so basically it is though the title is not been transferred but it has been kept with the bank the banker charge interest on the capital employed utilized by him for the actual period of utilization at par with though the advances made under cash credit system is repayable on demand there is no specific date of repayment in practice the advance rolled over over a period of time the debit balance is hardly fully wiped out and loan continues from one period to the other under this system the bank keeps adequate and cash balance to meet the demand of his customer as the demand arises the interest is charged on the actual amount of loan availed of thus to neutralize the loss caused to the banker the letter imposes a commitment charge at a normal rate of 1% or so on the unutilized portion of the cash credit limit next is loan system we are now talking about a loan it could be a short term loan it could be a medium term loan it could be a long term loan under the loan system a definite amount is lent at a time for a specific period at definite purposes it is withdrawn by the borrower once and the interest is payable for the entire period for which is granted it may be repayable in installment or in lump sum lump sum installment if the borrower needs funds again or wants to renew the existing loan a fresh proposal is placed before the bank the banker will make a fresh decision depending upon the availability of cash resources even if the full loan amount is not utilized the borrower has to pay the full interest. it is not the obligation of bank to use it it is the obligation of the borrower to use that amount within the stipulated period or to pay the principal plus interest to them types of loans short term loans the name is just giving you it is normally for the working capital requirement to the buyers 
to the borrower such loans are usually granted for a period of 2 1 year and these are secured against the tangible movable assets of the buyers of the borrowers like goods and commodities shared debentures such as goods securities are pledged or hypothecated with the banker when we speak about the medium and long term loans such loans are generally called term loans medium term loan and long term loan are granted by the bank with all india financial institutions like industrial development bank of india industrial finance corporation of india industrial credit and investment corporation of india limited terms loan are granted for a medium or long terms generally above 3 years and are meant to purchase a capital asset for establishment of new unit and for expansion expansion and diversification of an existing unit at the time of setting up of a new industrial unit long term loans constitute a part of the project finance which the entrepreneurs are required to raise from different sources these loans are usually secured by the tangible assets like land building plant and machinery banks now have the discretion to sanction term loan to all projects with the within the overall ceiling of the prudential exposure norms prescribed by the reserve bank the period of term loans will also be decided by bank themselves now there is a sort of stock cap arrangement about the bridge loans it may so possible that sometime you may be having a sort of medium or long term loan the formalities are taking time so what do you do you request the bank to give you the short term loan a bridging loan in the interregnum period these are swing loans interim funding gap financing are in fact short term loans which are granted to individual undertakings to enable them to meet their urgent and essential needs such loans are granted under the following circumstances what are those when a term loan has been sanctioned by the bank and financial institutions but the actual disbursement will take time as the necessary formalities are yet to be completed or when the company is taking necessary steps to raise the funds from the capital market by issue of equities or debt instrument these are the interregnum period bridge loans are provided by bank or the financial institutions which have granted term loans such loans are automatically repaid out of the term loan when it is disbursed or out of the funds raised from the capital market reserve bank of india has allowed the bank to grant such loans within a ceiling of 5% of the incremental deposit of the previous year prescribed for individual banks investment in shares and convertible debentures bridge loans may be granted for a maximum period of 1 year because this is a short term loan normally the interest rate on these loans are high because you are just going for the emergency requirement composite loans these are those which speaks about the working capital as well as the term loan as well under the composite loan scheme both term loans and working capital are provided through a single window the limit for composite loans has been increased from 10 lakh to 1 crore now for msme units these loans are sanctioned to encourage small borrowers to meet all kinds of requirements and make loan sanction process sl free cluster financing in the district there will be a cluster it is a sort of policy of the government of india who are advising the banks to adopt at least one cluster on each district so cluster based financing is devised by the banker to provide a full service approach to cater the diverse needs of small borrowers this approach is said to be held to help in dealing with the well designed well defined and recognized groups information risk management feedback mechanism and cost reduction 
personal loans these loans are granted by bank to individuals especially salary earners others with regular income to purchase the consumer durables like refrigerator tvs cars personal loans are granted for purchase construction of houses generally the amount of loans are fixed as a multiple of the borrower's income and repayment schedule is prepared as per his capacity to save classification of advances according to security secured advances according to banking regulation act 1949 a secured loan or advance a loan of advance made on the security of asset the market value which is not at any time less than the amount of loan or advances an unsecured loan or advances means a loan or advances not so secured the main feature of a secure loan are the advances is made on basis of security of tangible assets like goods and commodities life insurance policies corporate and government securities a charge is created on security in favor of the banker the market value of such security is not less than the amount of loan cardinal rule unsecured or partly secured loan it becomes if suppose the securities are less than the amount of loan unsecured advances unsecured advances are granted without asking the borrower to create a charge on his assets in favor of the banker the legal status of the banker in case of unsecured advances a banker remains an unsecured creditor and stand at par with other unsecured creditors of the borrower if the letter defaults guaranteed in advances guaranteed advances in fact also an unsecured advances without any specific charge being created on the asset in favor of the bank however a guarantee carries a personal security of two persons the principal debtor and the surety to perform the promise of the principal debtor if the letter fails to fulfill his promise liability of the surety arises immediately and automatically modes of creating charge over assets pledge you pledge the things creating a charge of the movable asset this is covered under indian contract act 1872 which is a bailment of goods as security of payment of a debt or performance of a promise hypothecation neither ownership nor possession over the budget is transferred to the creditor only an equitable charge is created in favor of the bank you cannot sell that particular property or the goods unless the hypothecation is over that the charge you are just keeping on that asset this is called hypothecation mortgage you mortgage the property transfer of property at defines as the transfer of an interest in specific immovable property for the purpose of security the payment of money advanced to the advanced by way of loan an existing or future debt on the performance of an engagement which give rise to the pecuniary liability the transferor is called mortgager and the transferee called mortgagee what are the kinds of mortgages legal mortgages and equitable mortgages when we speak about the legal mortgage it transfer the legal title or to the property in favor of the mortgagee by executing the mortgage deed in case of equitable mortgage equitable mortgage the mortgager hands over the document only of title to the property to the mortgagee and thus creates an equitable interest of the mortgagee in the mortgage property assignment the borrower may provide security to the banker by assigning any of the rights properties debts to the banker section 133 of the transfer of property act 
the borrowers generally assign the actionable claims to the banker lien the indian contract act confers the right to the banker of general lien the bank here is empowered to retain all securities of the customer in respect of the general balance due from them the banker gets the right to retain the securities handed over to him in his capacity as a banker till his dues are paid secured advances see when you get a secured advance what are you just see pledging for what are you just putting as security marketable securities which you can just market and can encash without any loss of time adequacy of margin if you suppose you are giving the securities of 100 rupees you are getting the credit of 75 documentation you just keep a sort of proper document agreement for the safeguard of the interest of both the parties goods and commodities you just bulk of advances granted based on the goods and commodities documents of title whatever the title of say documents say the goods you have you are just handing it over to the bank stock exchange securities whether these are debentures the first choice out of the shares the preference share is the first choice life insurance policies you get the advance against the life insurance policies as well and fixed deposit again the margin is a paramount cardinal principle to keep real estate like land and building are generally not regarded as suitable security for granting loans for working capital normally it is for the longer period book debts in that case you are just giving the direction to the book debts to make the payment to the bank okay supply bills when you get the supply bills from the government and you give them all those bills for collection to the bank get the money in advance and such bills are paid by the purchaser at the expiry of the stipulated period purchase and discount of bills when you get the bill you get a discount as well from the bank before the due date friends over a period of time reserve bank f uh, or reserve bank of india has permitted the bank to adopt syndication route to provide credit in lieu of consortium advance agreement between the two or more bank to give advance prospective buyer gives a mandate to the bank commonly referred to as lead manager the mandate bank prepares the information memorandum about the borrower on the basis of information memorandum each bank makes its own independent economic and financial evaluation thereafter a meeting of the participating bank is convened by the mandated bank and then a loan agreement is signed by all participating banks the borrower is required to give prior notice to the lead manager under the system the borrower has the freedom in terms of competitive pricing as per the existing guidelines of rbi banks are free to adopt syndicate route irrespective of the quantum of credit involved upon mutual agreement between the borrowing company and the bank non fund based facilities it is only when you give them a sort of paper guarantee you give them the facility that at times when the papers are complete you will get the credit and the guarantee to the other bank friends when we just look at the credit worthiness of the borrowers credit worthiness is judged by a banker on the basis of borrower's character capacity and capital character includes their personal attributes their say trend of payment sense of responsibility reputation and goodwill enjoyed by them capacity is about their financial health whatever they have and their ability to pay is their financial capacity 
and about the capital if the borrower is also expected to have financial stake in the business because in the case of business fails the banker will be able to realize the money out of the capital put in by the borrower so it is a sound principle of finance that the debt must be supported by a sufficient equity the relative importance of the above factors differs from bank to bank friends with that we have completed our unit number 10 and today's presentation as well we'll have our fifth session next time on the working capital management thank you namaskar